consider the following bases for R2. We have B equal to 1, 1, 2, 0, and we'll have C equal to 0, 1, 1, 2. If the coordinate vector for x with respect to b is equal to 3, 1, find the coordinate vector for x with respect to c. Now, what do we mean by a coordinate vector with respect to a basis? So, for instance, if I have coordinate vector for x with respect to b equal to 3, 1, what this vector here is telling me, okay, if I have a basis, then any vector in R2 can be written as a linear combination of elements of the basis. Our coordinate vector is gonna tell us how to construct the linear combination. So in this case, what's this telling us? What I have here is that x is gonna be equal to three times the first basis element, one, one, plus one times the second basis element, two, zero. So when I compute, we wind up getting that x is equal to 5, 3. So this is just giving us a blueprint for how to set up a linear combination. Okay, to get coordinate vector for x with respect to c, we're going to need to work backwards. Now, we already know what x is in terms of the standard basis, so that's what we usually work with with R2. So that's going to be 5, 3. So we're just going to set up our equations for a linear combination solve our coefficients, and then that builds x with respect to c. So I'm going to have okay, our coordinate vector of x with respect to c will be x1, x2. So what does that mean? I'm going to build a linear combination out of this, but with respect to c. So we'll have x1 times 0, 1, our first basis vector in c, plus x2 times 1, 2, our second basis vector in c then we want this to be equal to x, so that's going to be 5, 3. Now, to solve this, just note we can put it in matrix form. So we'll have 0, 1, 1, 2 times the vector x1, x2 equals 5, 3. Then what can I do? I have a 2 by 2 matrix here, so I'll just push it to the other side as its inverse. That's going to be 1 over determinant, so determinants of minus 1. And then we just use our 2 by 2 rule. So I'm going to flip on the diagonal, negate off the diagonal. So that gives me 2 minus 1 minus 1. We apply that to 5, 3, and then I get minus 7, 5 for my coordinate vector. Now, the check is just going to be this. Reconstruct the linear combination using minus 7, 5 with respect to C. What do we get? So that's going to be minus 7, the first vector, which is 0, 1, plus 5 times the second vector, which is 1, 2. What comes out? We're going to get 5, 3, which is our x. So the check works. Now, if you note, our very first move to get to the coordinates in C was to actually go and find x itself. So using the coordinates in B, we found that x was equal to 5, 3. In general, you're not going to want to do that. In general, you're going to go straight from coordinates in B to coordinates in C with no reference to the standard basis in the middle. So we want to set up an apparatus that does that. And the first step is going to be to put our linear combination equation in matrix vector form. Now, if you take a look at what we did with the check, what do we have here? Okay, we're going to have basis vector 1 for C, basis vector 2 for C. We have the coefficients for our coordinate vector with respect to C. And then we have x on the other side. So if we put this in matrix vector form, I'm going to need a definition first. We're going to call the basis matrix for C, okay, denoted P sub C. That's just going to be the vector where we take the basis vectors, load them in as the columns, okay, and in order. Then if I take P sub C, multiply by our coordinate vector for x with respect to C, out comes x. Okay, that looks like a fancy equation. All that's saying is, take the linear combination of these basis vectors, I get x out. So it's going to be a relation between basis matrix, coordinate vector, and then x, the vector in standard basis. Now, we want to set some things up here. So let's take a look. Now, here's our basis matrix for B. Here's our basis matrix for C. 
Okay, and this is what happens if we apply to the standard basis. So if I apply a standard basis factor, all we're saying is, for instance, in this case, construct the linear combination using a one on the first vector, a zero on the second vector. So we're gonna get out the first vector here, second vector here, and then the same idea over here. Okay, the equations we wanna pay attention to, basis matrix of B times coordinate vector for B equals X, but X is also equal to basis matrix for C times coordinate vector for C. So we'll get rid of the X and set these two terms equal to each other. And then what I wanna do is isolate C. So I'm gonna multiply both sides by P sub C inverse. Now, that's gonna mean I can get the coordinate vector for C directly off of the coordinate vector for B if I multiply by this matrix here. So note, I don't have to go through X itself to go from one side to the other. Okay, so that's gonna be a definition. We'll call P sub C inverse P sub B. We're gonna denote that as P sub B going to C. It's gonna be the change of basis matrix from basis B to basis C. So it's gonna carry coordinate vectors for B directly to coordinate vectors for C. Now, let's just see how this works and how things check. In my special example with B and C, what do we get? So I compute this matrix, we're gonna get minus one, minus four, one, two. If I apply our change of basis matrix to coordinate vector for X with respect to B, what happens? So we'll take this matrix, apply it to three, one, and then when you work that out, we're gonna get minus seven, five. And note, that's gonna be the coordinate vector for X with respect to C. So if I can get this matrix, we don't need to actually find X itself. 